Uh, so my name is Dr. Jerry Lopez. I'm with the Milpitas Unified School District. I'm the coordinator of early childhood education. Uh, and we got Sergio coming in. So we want to let you guys know a little bit of what's going on as far as innovation over at Milpitas. Uh, and yes, uh, March came along, March 13th. We still remember it. <laughs> and it threw everything into a tizzy. And so right away, uh, we wanted to, uh, there was no guidelines really for preschool. And we had to make it up as we went along. Luckily, we have a long history with distance learning and uh, uh, personal platforms, plat uh, personal learning platforms at Milpita. So we just borrowed a lot from them. Uh, and so what we want to tell you today is how we are approaching um, uh, a, a preschool in the time of pandemic. And if you're a, a literature guy, you know that that's a reference from um, Love in the Time of Cholera from uh, uh, Gabriel Marcia Marquez, the Mexican writer, actually the Colombian writer. Um, and so uh, Miss Eliza and Miss Teresa, I'm going to get out of the way and I'm going to let these two very able teachers uh, let you know what it is that we're doing over at Milpitas. So Miss Eliza, what do you guys do for preschool in Milpitas? Hello, um, I'm Miss Elisa, um, one of the teachers here at Sunny Hills. And um, Miss Teresa, if you want to introduce yourself before we start. Oh, so that's Miss Teresa. She is one of my paraeducators. She is my right hand for everything. She helps me keep going. So I am going to share my screen. This is something I say a lot to my students. Um, it helps our students get ready to um, prepare for our lesson. So thumbs up. Can everyone see my presentation? This is also something I do with my students just to know that they're engaged. So um, when we do teach preschool, um, it's very hard to keep them still, especially in front of a computer. So this is presentation preschool in a pandemic. So how do we do it? How did we do it? So when we first started our shelter in place, we were all freaking out. How are we going to teach preschool? Our preschool is play-based. We, um, we learn by playing, through singing, through, through playing with each other. And so what we had to do was um, come up with video calls. And what we are um, used to is Google Meet. So Zoom right now is very new to me. So I do apologize for all of the technical issues, but we did use Google Meet. Um, we used a classroom application called Seesaw Classroom. I'm not sure if um, you are familiar with this. I will delve into this later on. We also did monthly themed packets. And the most important teamwork. You can't teach virtually on your own. You need someone to depend on someone to motivate you and someone to work with. So our schedule right now for our distance learning is um, we have video calls um, from Monday through Thursday. And then we use our Seesaw app um, and post activities and assignments every Monday through Friday. So you're thinking, why don't we do video calls on Friday? So Fridays are very important to us. They are our prep time. Um, this is the time we use to create lesson plans, time to create activities for our packet, as well as put together our packets. I think virtual teaching is way harder than in-person teaching. There is a lot of time where you need to prepare, to plan. You need a plan. A, you need a plan B, plan C, plan D. And so Fridays um, really help us uh, to push through um, with distance learning. So for our video calls, um, I do two 15 minute sessions. I serve about 50, 52 students right now. And so at the time I needed a way to serve all these students within the time limit that we are allowed. Um, we are a three hour program. And so I had to divide my students into four groups. And so they meet with me every Monday to Thursday, twice a day. And so our first session, our first 15 minute session is a morning circle time. I put that we have 15 minute sessions. Usually I go 20 minutes depending on how engaged the students are. So for our morning circle, if you can see behind me, oh, let me talk about my morning circle first. I have my calendar, my days of the week. You need something bright. You need something that'll catch your students' attention. These are preschoolers. They love anything bright. They love anything colorful. And then I also do an ending circle time. 
So for my morning circle, I start off with a greeting. I ask the students, how are you today? How are we feeling? Thumbs up if you are having a good morning. Thumbs down if you are having not, not so great morning. And I like to reiterate that it's okay, you know, if you're not feeling great right now, it's so early in the morning, we're online, you wanna sleep. And then I do a morning song to wake everyone up. I usually do songs that have patterns like our open shut them song. I have them do a movement. If Is it okay if I sing the song real quick? Okay, so uh, one of our morning song is open shut them. So it goes open shut them, open shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them, put them on your lap, 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 and then creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them, way up to your chin, chin, chin. Close your mouth, do not talk, do not let them in. Fast and slow, fast and slow, fast, 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 slow, slow, slow. So that's a little bit of the song. It's longer, but it keeps the students engaged. It wakes them up basically um, to get ready for our lesson. And we do another one where it involves yelling. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention before we do start our morning circle, I like to tell the students to mute themselves. That's really important. You don't want echoes from other students or background noise to distract them. And so I like to use icons. I have these icons, I found them online. Um, this is for Google Meet, so this would be um, unmute and then mute yourself. So we did a lot of teaching um, for our students on how to know these icons, especially as well as our parents. Even. So we use that and then we also do our days of the week song. So a lot of my instruction is a lot of singing. I've noticed the more you talk, the less children are engaged. If I keep talking and talking and talking, their mind is somewhere else. So the way that I um, engage my students is I think to them. And so we do sing our days of the week. I would pull my um, camera closer and then they would see my days of the week. We would sing it and I would call on students and say, so-and-so, can you go ahead and unmute your mic and tell us what is today? And so they would answer, um, what is today, what was yesterday, and what tomorrow will be. And my kids are really great at that right now. So they're quick. They know how to unmute. If someone is too slow to unmute, they just go ahead and answer. And so that is also something you need to um, take into um, account for um, reminding your students to know their turn. When is it their turn? Um, we also do calendar. So I have my calendar here. I also have, I use my iPad um, like this to project um, a calendar just like this. Can everyone see my clipboard? Okay, so this is a calendar. We have the month, the day, the date, and counting. And so I wanted something that my students can have in front of them to do with me while we do circle time. Um, if they were just sitting the whole time, I don't think this would benefit or it would benefit them. And so I have them grab a, a dry erase marker. We put them in sheet protectors, have them trace the month, um, circle the date, write the number, and then count with me. And even if they're not um, you know, excellent in writing, I always remind them that it's okay if your writing does not look like mine. We are still learning how to hold a pencil, a pen. We're still learning how to write. And um, when you are teaching virtually, it's a lot of positive affirmations for your student. You need to remind them that, you know, I know school is different, but you are doing the best that you can, and that's all that matters. Um, and if there's time, usually I would go over our letter, number, color, and shape of the week. And you always have to remember if you're if you have technical difficulties to always have a backup with you. So if I can't show something on the screen, I have it right in front of me. So I have my flashcards ready, I have books ready. So you always need to think, if this doesn't work, what can I do next? Um, and so for our second um, circle time, um, we call it our afternoon session, just because it's like our ending if we were a three hour program. So this is the time where I introduce the theme of the week. Um, last week we were learning about bears. So I 
like to incorporate videos, movement, and a time for them to share. So I would play videos that um, pertain to the theme last week was bears, as I mentioned. So I would show them different kinds of bears. What do they look like in real life? And then after watching the videos, I like to ask questions to see if they were engaged, if they knew what they were watching. Um, I also like to incorporate movement. We're sitting on the screen full time. So these kids are bored and I try to find a way to have them engage. And um, you need to remember when you're virtual, you have to be silly. You have to be silly in order for them to join you. If you're just sitting like this, and talking monotone. These kids will not engage. These kids will not talk to you. Um, and I also give them a time to share. Um, I will mention later our activities, but this is the time where they're, they have the um, ability to grab whatever work they did that day and sh um, show it to, to me, to Miss Teresa, and to their friends. Um, I find this as a way for them to socialize with each other. I know it's hard preschool we love is a time for them to socialize and they don't have that virtually so I I like to um, include at least maybe five minutes for the children to talk to each other and say hey this is my work and so as a teacher my job is to um, make sure that uh, the rest of the students are on mute and I bring to their attention okay friends so so and so is speaking let's all have our listening ears can you show me your listening ears and then they can speak. Um, the classroom application that we use is called Seesaw. Um, there are different, there, I think there are three Seesaw apps, but we use Seesaw, Seesaw Classroom. There's one for Seesaw parents um, to help you communicate. I'm not familiar with that, so I will not delve into that. I will just delve into Seesaw Classroom. So it's called Seesaw Classroom, and it has this icon. So this is an app that allows the students to complete activities by uploading their work through um, pictures or videos or doing work directly on the application. And so every day we give the, our students six activities to do and they are all corresponding to these topics. So we have a social emotional activity. And so what we do is we have um, the zones of regulation. Um, you will see that later. We have the zones of regulation or a feelings chart. And then we have the students um, circle how they're feeling today and to also record themselves telling us why they feel that way. And then our other activities are letters and sounds. And so this pertains to the letter of the week. Um, I will usually um, post a screenshot of flashcards and then record myself saying the the words and having them repeat it. And so what they sent to me is what um, them reading the flashcards. And then we have reading or math. I like to give them uh, mini booklets like this for them to work on. This week they worked on their I Am Thankful book. So I would show this book to them and uh, explain to them that they need to color it and read it for them. And some of my students can already read, so they like to show me that which is great. Um, and then sometimes we do math. Sometimes for math, I will have worksheets. I don't have a worksheet with me right now, um, but yeah. And then writing, we do have packets for our students. They're A through Z. And then they work on a writing every week. And there's, um, there is always a video on how to write the letters. And then we have an art. Um, topic, whatever art it is for that day, there's a video for them to follow along and do at the same time. And then we also have gross motor. Um, I have some paras who are really great at this. They take videos of themselves doing movement and then they have the kids pick their favorite movement and record themselves and send it to us. So this is what our seesaw looks like, as you can see. That was a lot of information, so I wanted to break it down. So this is what Seesaw would look like. Um, we upload videos, like for example, this is our writing. So this is a packet that they have, I mean, a worksheet that they have in their packet. And then one of our paras makes a video on how to write number 13. And they do it step by step so that students can either 
watch it first before doing their worksheet or watch along while they do their worksheet. Um, here we have a reading and this is the flashcards that I mentioned. And this is what it would look like as a teacher. So I have some students that have already submitted some things. I blocked out their names for privacy and their pictures. Um, so this is what they would show me. They're really proud, these students of mine. They are, they're amazing. They love to show all their work and they do their best. So what works virtually? What works virtually is having open communication with parents. This is extremely important. You need to understand your parents and their family dynamics. You need to understand that there may be other students in the household and your student is not their only child. I have families that have multiple children and so it is hard for them to sit with their student while I have my virtual teaching. So you need to be open with them and ask them if they need help, whether it comes to, when it comes to our online application Seesaw, like with extensions or with our video calls. And you also need to understand that parents might be working. So for our Seesaw application, we, at the, at the beginning, we expected that the students would be doing their activities between our first um, video call and our second video call. And I found that to be too demanding, especially during this time. I have a lot of parents that are essential workers that work in the morning. And so I would not receive my students work until nighttime. So it's a lot of flexibility virtually. And also checking in time from time to time with your family. Some families might be going through the worst possible scenario and they might not tell you and you might um, assume things that you shouldn't assume. So don't assume and just check in from check in from time to time with your family. Um, you also need to understand that not all not not all of your students will complete all of the activities. I have some students that are camera shy. So when it comes to doing like our gross motor of movement. They don't want to be in front of the screen. They don't want to be recorded. So you just need to take into account at least if they do at least one activity that you have, they're engaged. And you can also ask parents if um, they did it, they just don't want to post. So I have some parents that will just send me an email. We did the activity. They're just afraid to be on the camera. They're, they're afraid to be recorded. Um, another thing that works virtually is teaching students how to use controls on video calls. So this is not only for students, but also for parents. I have had parents who have never used a computer, who have never video called. And so you need to understand that. Not everyone is fortunate enough to have a laptop or have a phone where they can video chat. So when you do first start with virtual, start slow. Um, make sure parents understand how things work virtually, um, what buttons to use, how to log in, and how to save um, the information. So like I mentioned, I like to use icons to um, help the students know to unmute um, and to mute. Um, you can also use icons for anything. You can use it to teach them how to raise their hands, you could teach them to show, like for example, you can have pictures of eyes and say, show me your looking eyes. And then they'll show your eyes or show me your ears, something like that, something that can help you in any way. And so um, you also need to provide students and parents with the necessary tools in order to co complete the work and be able to go online. And so what we did for our families that don't have any, um, electronics, no laptops, we ha uh, we distributed Chromebooks to our uh, families. I think we distributed all of it, right, Mr. Lopez? Yes, and uh, we, because we're preschool, we actually um, don't have Chromebooks assigned to us. So we, but we benefit from all the leftover and return Chromebooks and refurbished programs that the district has. So luckily they have a good store of that and we were able to benefit from that. And so with the Chromebooks, we also provide our students with copies of everything that we do. 
Um, for example, we provided them our calendar so that they have something to do with us during um, morning work or morning circle, I mean. And then we provided students with a pencil pouch full of items. We had um, pencils, erasers, crayons, dry erase marker, anything that, and scissors, I forgot to put scissors, anything that they can use to, um, to do their work to complete the activities that we give them. Um, and we also provide, like I mentioned earlier, provide proper instruction to both parents and students. And so we like to iterate it, reiterate virtually that um, the students are doing their work, not the parents doing their work. So in preschool, you can tell when parents do the work versus when their child does their work. And so something I like to um, tell them is that it's okay that um, we make mistakes. It's okay if our work is not perfect. These are preschoolers and that's how they learn. They learn through trial and error. So let them, let them explore at home. Let them um, be able to do their own work. Um, one thing that is also important is to understand your population and using all tools to communicate properly. I have many students who are Vietnamese, who are Chinese, and who are um, in the Latino population, they don't speak English. And so I have my paraeducators help me with that. So I need I need them to properly, communi properly communicate anything that I communicate to my students. And this is very important. You don't want to leave any family out. They need to know all the information. It needs to be fair. So the most important thing about virtual is teamwork. So I have a co-teacher, Miss Natalie. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here. Um, she is our inclusion, inclusion teacher. We have about, how many do you have? Six inclusion students. And so she helps me with my morning circle. And there are times where she'll teach the students the zone of the zones of development. So this is a great tool to use um, with your children, with your students. It opens um, up time for them to talk to each other. So you can do like a voting system and say, raise your hand if you're in the blue zone and then they can raise their hand. And then you can say, oh, so-and-so, do you want to share why you're in this zone today? And so after all of that's done, we like to um, remind them that it's okay to be in all of these zones. Um, next week, Miss Natalie is um, going to, to teach them about unexpected and expected behaviors. So like, for example, if we were in the red zone, is it okay to hit? No, so what tools can you use? You can go um, to the corner and calm down. You can uh, breathe in, breathe out, something like that for students to learn. This is important, especially at home as well. They can learn how to, to deal with their emotions and understand that it's okay to feel a certain way. It's okay to be sad that we're not in person for school. It's okay to be sad that you don't have friends to hang out with. And my paraeducators help keep the system running. I cannot do virtual alone. So that's something I wanna remind you. You can't do virtual alone. You need a partner. You need someone to help you. It's not just a you. This is what I do. This is how I should do it. It's a lot of um, sitting down, it's a lot of planning, thinking what's the best way to serve our students. And so they help me by creating um, our packets. So this is what I send out to my paras right here. So this is our weekly um, lesson plan. And then I put my paras names to whichever topic that they will do that month. So each month they have their own topic to work with. So for example, Ms. Teresa, um, this month she's in charge of our art um, art projects. And so these are the projects that she would record and then post on Seesaw for our students to see. And then right over here is a, an agenda for our parents. So every time we send a packet, we have a detailed agenda of for each day what the students need to do, just so that everyone is on the same track and um, when we do make our packets, everything is organized. They're all paper clipped by each week. And so it's a lot of work. Um, 
They also, like I mentioned, they create examples for the activities with pictures for voiceovers or videos. And they also help me um, with my video calls during our second meeting. It's hard to teach when a student is always interrupting. You know, preschoolers, they love to talk, especially when they now know how to unmute themselves. I have students telling me about their TV during a lesson. And so it's important to have someone there to um, be able to um, mute some students when, uh, when needed, and also to help you see the students that are there. We use Google Meet, so when we do share um, something on our screen, we can't see our students. And so it's always nice to have another teacher see if our students are engaged or not and then have them tell us. Um, so I don't know what I'm talking. Miss Teresa is one of our paraeducators and um, I'll let her go ahead and talk about what she does to help our, our distance learning. Hello, everyone. My goodness, Miss Eliza, as you can see, she is so super organized. She is on top of everything. And the best thing is she does know how to delegate. You must delegate to your paraeducator. They are your right hand. They are your helper. Do not overstress yourself. And so my job is I try to make her life as easy as possible. I do as much as I can. But she is, uh, you know, I give her extra time that way. She has, you know, once she come up with the idea what we need to do uh, for the month, <laughs> she planned every single activity. And so then I take over and you know, I do the, the art project, you know, get the package yet, I do all the photocopying and to help keep her going. I bring in orange, fresh squeezed orange juice for her sometimes. <laughs> Just anything to help my teacher to, to you know, keep going. But yes, we work as a team and it's so super important. And being organized is so important. So we always um, you know, uh, plan like a month ahead, sometimes two months ahead, so that you know, we don't wait until the last minute. And that's what, what you're uh, learning is difficult. As a teacher, is you have to plan ahead. When you're in the classroom, sometimes we can just go with the flow. <laughs> but with virtually, everything must be pre-planned. And so Ms. Eliza is awesome. She does everything and she got everything ready. And, and as she mentioned, you must have plan B, C, and D. Sometimes it doesn't work. So you have backup plan as well. <laughs> awesome, Eliza. Thank you. Um, one thing I do want to share with you, um, I forgot to share this earlier. We do have a um, we do have a website that we use. Everyone see it? So this is a, can you all hear me? Okay. This is all, uh, this is a website that I created when we first started uh, our virtual learning. It has all our information about our teachers. So it says, welcome to our class. And then all our emails, just in case um, our families want to message, reach out to us. And then we have meet the teachers. So it shows all our teachers here. It has um, our inclusion teacher, Ms. Lopez, our secretary, and all our paras. Just so that parents know who they are, virtually you don't know who your teachers are. You can't meet them in person. And so, especially if we are uh, divided into groups, I wanted our other students to know who the other teachers are here. We also have, oh, sorry. So this, this uh, section right here is a uh, tutorial. How do you use Seesaw? I can't access it right now, but it's a tutorial step-by-step -step for parents to um, know how to log in, how to upload their, their students' work, and how to do um, activities on online. All right, there you go. All right, do, does anyone have any questions? I know it's information overload. Yeah, Ms. Eliza, uh, Sergio had a question about whether we run the class from school all the time or is it done from home? And uh, yeah, uh, there's a couple of staff members that feel very comfortable and we run all the uh, uh, the protocols here. We have a sign in uh, safe pen process, uh, sanitizers all over the place. It's a whole site that we have for classes and there's only about uh, four or five of us that regularly come in. We use this site as a uh, teaching studio. Uh, we do have another identical site and that's where we have since actually since June 8th, we've had an uh, in-person program for 56 students with about another 12 staff members. So uh, Miss Eliza comes in here every day. Miss Teresa comes in here every day. Uh, the other four paras either have um, 
uh, at risk factors or family with at risk factors. So they come in for the planning uh, and the preparation and the packet making, uh, and then they do their video calls from home. So overall, even though they might be at home or at site, uh, they uh, they end up getting a, a very similar uh, similar approach to uh, to their work. Um, Yes, and don't forget that when we're on site, that we all still use protocol. We all wear masks, and we are in separate classrooms. Yep. So this. And how do we distribute packets? Angela asked. Uh, we have a. Uh, it's a month. It's a monthly or or distribution, uh, or is it a semi-weekly? It's monthly, right? It's a monthly uh, distribution. So what we plan is we always plan for the next month. So for example, we just finished our uh, December packet. And so I email parents to pick up usually the last Friday of the month. Um, so it was last, when was it? Last Friday they picked up. And for those that can't pick up, they can pick up the next week. Mm -hmm. um, and when they do come, it's we follow all protocols. They have to come with masks. They, uh, we have hand sanitizers outside. We are distant. Everything is separated, so. We try our best to follow the protocol. Yeah, and we uh, ebb and flow with the uh, with the latest news. And so I remember last year, graduation was a drive-through graduation. Uh, so they all drove through, and we were all masked up. And the and uh, for Halloween, uh, we had a, a materials pickup and uh, distribution of packets. So the students were encouraged to come in their Halloween costume. So mm -hmm. it was very festive, and we still social distance and we uh, distributed. I, you guys distributed candy, right? No, we're not allowed. Oh no, to, we decided again. We were talking no, no, no. about how to, how to do it, but Sergio did have a question. Uh, actually, more of a comment that he has a five-year-old with an IEP. Uh, we do have uh, a, a six students right now. Mm -hmm. One of them actually that's decided not to participate, uh, but uh, we do have an inclusion program. During any regular year, we would have had uh, up to eight students with full IEPs and a variety of. Um, diagnoses and behaviors um and uh so we the, the hardest uh, and you would think oh they're having the hardest time at home some of them are actually doing quite well uh as far as being engaged and um uh, preschools comes in all uh, preschoolers come in all shapes and flavors and sizes uh and uh so yeah we have some students that are considered general education that take a little longer because of either shyness or, or lack of skills uh but everybody is 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 progressing including our iep students our, our students with the with uh, uh, special needs. Uh, anything else, questions, uh, uh, Sergio, uh, Angela?